Good afternoon, Internet. I am Matt Buyak, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the 56th problem from the Project Euler Problem Archive. Now, this problem asks us to consider numbers of the form a to the b power, where a and b are both less than 100, and it asks us to find the largest sum that can be created by taking a number of this form and adding up its digits. That is, finding its so-called digital sum. And I think uh, solving this problem is pretty straightforward, especially since we have our big integer class. I just did a video a few days ago where we made some improvements to our big integer class so that we can now easily convert between strings and uh, big integers and back and forth. Um, that's definitely going to help us with this problem. There's just one minor optimization that I would point out, which is that we don't want to compute a to the b separately for each possible pair a comma b. Um, that is, once we've calculated a to the b, we can calculate a to the b plus 1 just by multiplying by a one more time. Um, it's perhaps an obvious uh, optimization, but a critical one nonetheless. So let's get into it. As usual, we will copy our template directory to make our problem directory. Enter our problem directory. And open our main.cpp. Um, as I mentioned, we'll want to use our big integer class, so let's just take a, uh, a look at that real quick. So as I said, we have the ability to uh, initialize a big integer from a string and convert a big integer to a string. Um, this in particular we'll make use of. We also have the ability to multiply a big integer by a 32-bit integer, and we'll make use of that as well. So in order to actually use our big integer class, we will need to say include big int dot h. And we'll need to modify our make file to link in the necessary library. OK, um, so uh, as I said, I think the approach to this problem is pretty straightforward. In our main function, we're just going to iterate over possible values of a. And then for a given value of a, we're going to want to find, uh, or we're going to want to consider all values a to the b, where b is from 1 to 99. And then uh, for each uh, big integer, a to the b, we'll convert it to a string and find the digital sum. OK, so let's begin our implementation. So let's say uh, for int a equals 1. Actually, let's do 2. Uh, if, we, if we try a equals to 1, we're going to just be multiplying 1 by itself a whole bunch, and the sum is always going to be 1. So let's start at 2. Uh, a less than 100, increment a. And we'll need to keep track of our uh, solution. So we'll start that off at zero. Remember, we're looking for the maximum. Um, then we'll say uh, int sum equals, let's call it uh, get, um, get max for base. And the base is going to be a. Um, that is the base of the exponent. Uh, not the uh, number base, uh, just to clarify that. Okay, so then we're going to say solution is equal to the maximum value between the current solution and the new sum. And then at the end, we'll just say printf solution is equal to solution. OK, so now we need to implement this function here, get max for base. So we'll say um, int get max for base int 
a. Um, I suppose we could make this constant if we wanted to. Um, and then we'll say uh, big int bi. And uh, there's an important question about what this should be initialized to. And it turns out we want to initialize this to 1. And I'll, I'll explain why in just a moment. OK, so now we're going to iterate for uh, int b is equal to 1, b is less than 100, plus plus b. OK. And uh, inside here, we're going to want to multiply our big integer by a to get the next exponent. So we'll say bi dot uh, multiply by a. And now you can see, perhaps, why we initialize this to 1 instead of a. And the reason is that after we have entered the loop and done our multiplication, we want uh, the value of our big integer to, in fact, correspond to a to the b. And so uh, because on the first iteration of the loop, we will have multiplied this by a once, and uh, b is equal to 1, we want uh, bi to start off at 1. You'll notice if we had started it off at a, then already at this point, it would be equal to a squared, uh, which would not be correct. OK, so now we want to say uh, int sum is um, equal to, uh, we'll just say digital sum bi. And then we want to keep track of the largest sum that we have found so far. Now, in general, a, uh, a larger value of b is going to mean a um, a larger sum, because we're uh, raising it to a larger exponent. But that's not guaranteed to be the case. You could have, um, for example, as the, as the problem description points out, you could have a massive number with just uh, you know, a single one and many, many zeros, which would have a digital sum of one. And so we can't, um, we can't shortcut the process of actually you know, taking all of these exponents and calculating their sum. OK, so uh, we'll say int max is equal to 0. And then we're going to want to compare max to uh, sum uh, in case, um, or so that when sum is greater than max, we'll update it accordingly. So we'll say is uh, max of max and sum. OK. And then we just say uh, return max. So now we just have to implement this um, you know, digital sum here. Just as a quick aside, um, there are I guess different styles uh, that you can that you can take to approach problems like this or, or coding in general. Um, this is something of a, a top-down style where basically we started with uh, the sort of the top of our of our call stack, and as we're you know getting to a point where we have this function you know, digital sum that we haven't implemented yet, then we go and implement that, and we sort of you know recursively um, fill out our solution. Um, uh, the other approach would be bottom up, where you would start by implementing generally useful functions for the objects that you're working with. And, and sort of building up a solution from the ground up. And both are valid approaches. So in this case, we're taking a top-down approach. OK, so let's implement this um, digital sum. It's going to take a constant uh, big int reference. And one thing I would just note, um, Sometimes we have to be careful about using integer instead of a 64-bit integer. Um, but it's, I think it's pretty easy to see that we are nowhere close to this uh, overflowing the 32-bit integer. And the way to think about that is that 
Um, at the most, our number is going to have uh, 200 digits, um, and that's because you know as the uh, as the problem description points out, 100 to the 100 has uh, 201 digits, and so our number will definitely have less than that. And uh, even if each digit was a nine, call it 10 to make the math easy, um, we're only going to have a sum less than 2,000. So we're nowhere close to overflowing um, regular 32-bit in integer. That um, uh, may seem obvious, but it's, it's always worth checking just to be sure. Okay, so now we're going to say uh, int sum is going to be equal to uh, accumulate. Uh, oh, excuse me. First, we have to um, first we have to convert this to a string. Let's say uh, std string digits is going to be bi dot to string. There we go. And then we're going to say uh, digits dot begin, digits dot end. Zero. Okay, so what is this about? Um, so first of all, uh, uh, interesting story. I've been using uh, C++ for almost 25 years now. Um, not professionally, but, but since I was in, in high school or so. Um, but for much of my career, I actually didn't have a chance to use the STL. It was either... Uh, disallowed, um, uh, discouraged, or in some cases outright impossible to use. Um, think low-level device drivers and the like, environments where the STL was just not available. And so um, I've been actually learning quite a bit about the STL going through and making these videos for all of you. And when I was preparing this video, I had the thought to, my, to myself, um, there's got to be a function for adding up the elements of an array uh, or other container, and in fact there is this uh, accumulate function here. If we go back, I've uh, pulled up the reference page. Um, it's defined in numeric, so we'll need to include that. And it just takes a, uh, a range of a container and an initial value for the sum, and we're just going to be starting at zero. And so up here we'll say include numeric. Uh, but there is one uh, caveat to using this method to calculate our sum, which is that we don't actually want to add up the characters. We want to add up the digits. And you'll remember that, the, uh, for example, the, the character 0 has you know, this character code, but this, this does not have the value 0. This is, um, I, I don't recall it off the top of my head, but it's you know, some integer that's used as, a, as a, a code for the character zero. And so normally, in order to get the digit from the character code, we subtract zero uh, from the character code. And we would do that for every single character in the string. And so in order to get our actual sum from uh, the sum that we've calculated here, we need to subtract the character code for zero multiplied by the size of the string. So we'll say uh, return uh, sum minus uh, s, uh, digits dot size times the character code for zero. Okay, and I think that should be everything. All right, let's see how it works. Go back to our shell and make and solve. And we have an answer here, 972. Um, before we do that, I think, I, think I, I would just like to do something a little bit fun. Um, let's go back to uh, main. And I just want to print out um, our, our, our numbers here. Um, you know, if we go back to here where we formed a to the b, and we can say something like uh, print f uh, percent d to the percent d is equal to percent s, and that's going to be a b 
and bi dot two string dot cster. Um, sometimes I find with these problems, you know, you get this this simple number at the end, you know, 972. It's not even clear if your program is behaving as you expect. Certainly it's, you know, maybe a little bit underwhelming. So it's much cooler to see all of this. Look at that. That is just spectacular. And our, our big integer class just, you know, crushes through that like a boss. Very nice to see. Anyway, uh, with that little aside, um, go back and comment that out. Run our solver again. 972 is our candidate solution. If we go back to the archive and sign in. And go back to the second page and go to problem 56. We see that that does in fact match our solution. So uh, thank you very much for watching. As always, tomorrow I'm hoping I will finally have that uh, poker video for you. So keep an eye out for that.